Hello, welcome to Levant TV headlines. U.S. Pentagon Chief Ashton Carter met Iraqi Kurdish President Masoud Barzani on the second day of a trip to Iraq aimed at reviewing efforts to defeat the Islamic State. Turkish warplanes struck Islamic State group targets across the border in Syria, government officials said, the day after ISIS militants fired at a Turkish military outpost, killing a soldier. Turkish police have launched raids to arrest suspected members of the Islamic State group and Kurdish militants following a wave of deadly violence in the country. Two Libyan soldiers have been killed and ten wounded when Eastern government forces made a new push against the Islamic State fighters in the embattled center of Benghazi. Italian Foreign Minister Paolo Gentiloni will go to Iran on August 4th and 5th in the latest high-power trip to Tehran following the July 14th nuclear deal. And now let's have a look at the top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. From Beirut, the Daily Sal is reporting that at least 10 rebels have surrendered to Hezbollah and the Syrian army in an embattled border city, which has been the site of fierce clashes for more than three weeks. The paper also reports that Beirut's mayor says the garbage crisis is expected to ease if a private company contracted by Beirut's municipality succeeds in finding a new landfill outside the city. The Egypt Independent leads reporting that at least 29 people drowned when a small boat collided with a large and uh, with a barge and capsized on the Nile River near Cairo on Wednesday night. The paper also reports that the Islamic State's Egyptian affiliate claimed responsibility for a bombing that the army said killed four soldiers near Rafah, a town on the border with the Gaza Strip. From the United Arab Emirates, the Khalij Times leads reporting that Iran has outlined plans to rebuild its main industries and trade relationships following a nuclear agreement with world powers, saying it was targeting oil and gas projects worth 185 billion US dollars by 2020. The paper also reports that representatives of Yemen's ex-leader Ali Abdullah Saleh are in talks with diplomats from the United States, Britain and UAE to help end four months of war and in the impoverished country. Now let's have a look at the top Middle East headlines in newspapers here in London. In The Telegraph, a report that a Palestinian man was shot dead in his home by Israeli forces after hurling a plastic plant pot at them in a rage when they wounded his son. 52-year-old Falah Abu Maria died after being shot twice in the chest by Israeli soldiers who had tried to raid the family home in the West Bank village of Beit Omar near Hebron in the early hours of the morning to arrest a wanted man. The Guardian leads reporting that Turkish fighter jets have struck Islamic State targets in Syria and the government has rounded up hundreds of suspected militants in a coordinated crackdown as the country deployed military force for the first time against a terror group. The bombing is a strong tactical shift for Turkey, which has long been reluctant to follow the US-led coalition into taking military action against ISIS. Also from the UK, the Independent leads reporting that the Islamic Republic of Iran, like its nuclear ally America, is fighting and failing in its own war on drugs, and its hangmen have never been busier amid an unprecedented spike in the number of Iranians put to death. Tehran faces renewed calls to address human rights abuses as the West lifts sanctions in return for a commitment not to build a nuclear bomb. And now the international papers. From Berlin, the Deutsche Welle reports that U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter has extended his surprise trip to Iraq by visiting Kurdish leaders in Erbil. The talks are expected to focus on the U.S. training of Kurdish forces, known as the Peshmerga, and U.S. provision of arms via Iraq's central government led by Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi. And finally, China's Global Times reports that Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas warned of talks that the Islamic Hamas movement is holding with Israel on a temporary truce in Gaza. Abbas told a meeting for his Fatah party in Ramallah that this truth is aiming at a geographic separating of the Gaza Strip from the entire territories of the Palestinian homeland. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching and bye for now.